Welcome to Lights, Camera, Barstool, episode 109, aka The Long Take. Me and Gooch going to be talking to you about some a couple news things. We're going to go over some of the movies that are coming and, and shows that are coming to the big streaming services this month. Uh, a couple a couple really good ones, too. Kind of excited for them. Especially, there's there's two where they haven't been out for a long time, and I'm very excited for them to jump back up. Um, and also, we're going to do a quick draft of the I Think You Should Leave skits. Uh, Is Kandahar coming to streaming? Can uh, K- Kandahar or Kandahar? I don't think so. <laughs> Large said he saw it and he said it was absolute dog shit. He said it was one of the worst movies he's seen. I keep seeing it like in the theater because like I'll scroll through MC and just see which ones are showing to see like what I'm behind on. And I see it and I'm like, he said Gerard Butler does not like do any action at all, oh, which him. is what are we doing? It feels like that movie and The Covenant have a very eerie. They're sister similar. movies. He yeah. said that. He said that he had seen The Covenant two weeks ago. The same thing. And they are the almost exact same movies. That just makes perfect just sense. Just one is with Jake Gyllenhaal. And the other is Charles other, Yeah. Whatever, man. Uh, we'll get to kind of hard. I'm sure we'll get to kind of hard around the same time we get to uh, All Quiet on the Eastern Front or Western <laughs> Front or whatever. The Eastern Front. All Quiet on the Eastern Front, the sequel movie. Uh all right, so the first thing we had was there's a live action Miles Morales Spider Man movie in development, according to Amy Pascal. Uh, we actually just interviewed Jake Johnson for um, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, which is awesome, by the way. Awesome, awesome movie. We both had a blast, even though it was at a shit theater. Uh, that was garbage then. Oh, it's not that bad. It was pretty bad. It's not that bad. This, this the is fact like, that we had to. Oh, Jesus, man. I know they added new. These they are added new, new arms. Like, new like, arms. Structurally sounder, but like could not be more. Uh, whatever dude i'm so sick of bitching about the studios <laughs> um did yeah so it was an awesome movie i mean the movie fucking ripped i was actually gonna go again tonight um but have decided against it because i need to sleep <laughs> um but yeah no fucking amazing like just visually like out of the theater i was like is that the best animation i've ever seen and the more i've thought about it i'm like i really think it it is like i can't think of anything that was has truly topped that it feels five years, ten years ahead of any other animation studio. Yeah, and we we were talking about it uh, to Jake Johnson about it. I think the thing, the biggest thing about that movie is that like the stakes are as big as any giant Marvel thing, like that's massive or whatever. But also, it still feels like you know friendly neighborhood, whatever Spider Man, and like a story still has like a root or like a heart that you can grab onto instead yes. of just being like it's something about just animation lo- being so much easier. To deal with with like these massive scale things versus live action, which is so hard. Exactly. Um, And it's not I've I've seen the concern pop up, especially following like No Way Home. Like, is this propped up by cameos? Not at all. Like the cameos that are there. If you're hardcore Spider-Man, you might really go, oh, oh, oh. But it's they don't pay play roles in the plot, really. Like the the thing doesn't stop. Like the ship doesn't stop to be like, oh, look at that attraction. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's still going. If you blink, you miss it. And dude. Hobie, Daniel Kaluuya's uh, new Spider-Man fucking really rules. Apparently that took them that added like 18 months to the production was figuring out his animation style. It is. Like, it's so different than everything else that happens in the movie. It's so crazy. cool. It's so weird how I, I'd, I'd love to watch like a full like hour breakdown on how they blend. Mm-hmm. It's seamlessly blended like those animation styles. It's just wild. And Gwen's world is insane. Like it's like looking at a watercolor painting the whole time. It's mm-hmm. It's crazy. We're super excited for it. Um, but the uh, live action Miles Morales obviously wouldn't be a Spider Verse thing. It would be like, you know, just a Miles Morales mm-hmm. grounded storyline, which that would be cool. I mean, the live action Spider Man, uh, out of all, like, it is, it's a very unique kind of property because out of all, there's no superheroes that really do that, that get like three different iterations within this short of a period with three totally it's different. It, it's him and Batman. Yeah. It's basically it, right? Yeah. And like, and they're easily, I think, the two most popular superheroes right now. Yeah, and Batman, I don't think has the like. I would say S- Spider Man has a better track record overall than Batman does. Like as far as like pure movie to like consistency across movies. Like the highs of Dark Knight are obviously way higher than anything Spider Man, um, but just consistency wise, uh, yeah, Spider Man has it. Like the, there's no, there's no uh, like Batman or Robin. Worst Spider Man, yeah, or Amazing Spider Man two, maybe probably. Yeah. Those two are close. I'd probably say Amazing Spider Man two is worse, but. Yeah, but then the rest are like good. Yeah, to good great. to good to great, honestly. Yeah. If not, I think, yeah, pretty much all of them. It's very easy to like, I or, or I guess like relate to a superhero, or it's an easy one to get to like kind of get along with. Yeah. Like, Batman, not so much because he's a rich asshole, <laughs> which we none of us can really get to. No, I am the knight. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm interested to see if this 
plays into the same way Sony's current iteration of Spider-Man, where it's it is their Spider-Man, but it's in the MCU. It's a very weird setup they have going with it feels like a lot of contention on both sides. Like every time the contract's up, they both try to squeeze as much power out yeah. of the other side. Um, I wonder if Miles will go into the MCU or if he'll fit into just a separate Sony verse interacting with Tom Holland, Spider-Man. And then can't forget, they do have that Madam Web movie coming up, too. Yeah. And Pascal said they would do Spider-Woman, too, I think, as when they were talking yes. about uh, Miles Morales. Which that feels like something they're saying and it won't get off the ground yeah. for another five years. But the Miles Morales thing, Had that's like, big. Obviously too. That's big. I couldn't ima imagine like five years ago this would have ever happened. Like Miles, fine character. His comic runs are good, not great. But what Spider-Verse did for the character, I mean. Great iteration, great video game. It's all kind of worked out. Yeah, it really has. It, it really has. Yeah. All right. Time to start. You ready? Oh, we, we, you print, we, print them out? I printed mine out. I oh, we do it. We do it. <laughs> you have to show me yours. Okay. So we decided ahead of time we're going to do this like almost weekend update style. I'm going to slack folks jokes. I'm going to slack mine to you. All right. We, we were doing a little bit of a little bit of folks. We're we just going to do one for style. each. Uh... Yeah, we'll go one by one. Okay. Well, this one, I printed mine because I had a little more time. This one is for your Miles Morales one. All right. <clears throat> folks, you know how they change the titles to movies when they. Sorry, let me start over again. Great start. I know how to read. I do know how to read. Folks, you know how they change the titles to movies when they release abroad? Well, I got a heads up on what the title for Miles Morales will be in Europe. That's right, folks. They'll be calling him Kilometer Morales. That was a good one. I think you did. You, the reading was what made that joke work. <laughs> Took me a second. Took a second, yeah? Yeah. I was trying to think of a pun off the name Morales. Much easier with just Miles. Like yeah. I, was, I was waiting there for like 10 minutes on fucking Morales. I was like, oh yeah, Miles is way easier. All right, I'm sending mine to you. Okay. This is so dumb. This one might be too hot to read on the air. We'll find out. <laughs> a live action Miles Morales movie is in development. And with that, a flood of fan casts for the coveted role. I, Jesus, I just read the first one. Folks, I haven't seen this... <laughs> may have to get cut, but <laughs> that may have to go. But that was good. That was solid. Just bleep that entire part. Just bleep the entire part. <laughs> Jesus, I was thinking just like a, a tone below that. <laughs> the other ones aren't nearly as bad. I promise. Mine actually kind of get it. That, that one was kind of that one was the hot one. <laughs> that one was my safest, so it's only going to get worse. All right, all right. What do we have next? <laughs> uh, Ted Lasso finale. I didn't. I still haven't watched it yet. Uh, you did. So uh, just <laughs> event, vent, vent your heart out. You know, after the penultimate episode, I kind of got a little hope. I was like, this feels more in line with what we what we had grown accustomed to before this season. And it just went right back to shit. It's just it was kind of it encapsulated really the whole problem with the season. It was bloated. You had too many threads, too many storylines. Shit was just happening off screen. So much shit happened off screen, like big moments, massive moments, which spoiler warning, skip ahead 15 seconds. If you don't want to hear it, Ted is leaving the, the team. You never see him tell the team that he's leaving. You don't oh. see there's a cliffhanger in the penultimate episode where he he's about to tell Rebecca what he's going to do, which it makes it look like they're about to pour their feelings out to each other. And then it just cuts to the next episode. He's at her house and they don't address it like really in any way that they what they talked about it's it was bizarre rebecca ends up with a fucking rando who you met for a quarter of an episode in the amsterdam not, what's his name not rupert or no, sam no, fuck not rupert sam yeah that was my biggest problem with season two was that whole sam that was just weird why would they establish that and then not even do it why would they tease rebecca and sam and or That's rebecca and ted and like oh, yeah, they that, teased yeah. them both like throughout the season and then wait so ted's leaving the club for what to go home like to coach at home or did he get like an offer to coach football at home no no like they don't even say what his job is going to be he's just like i'm quitting the team that i brought to go home and with his i'm sorry his wife and kid are also complete randos they've yeah. been in maybe 20 minutes of screen time the whole series they're randos too <laughs> 
he's going on a fa- he almost like uh is going home almost like tom hanks and castaway but his yeah. dentist fucking his wife dude it's like there's just no character Damn, like there dude. really wasn't much character growth either like nathan shelley comes back to the team you don't see that moment mm. you don't see like the team welcoming welcome him back it's just so weird what they did they have roy and jamie fighting over keely in the final episode the final episode there's like 20 minutes of they them didn't fighting. resolve it they did okay. but it's just like it was a very frustrating season it there was a clear i don't care how much of a ted lasso defender you are there's no way that you can wriggle out of saying that there was a massive step down in the writing this season they were clearly Oof. trying to do more than what they should have been trying to do and if you look at like the run times on seasons it started out i think there was like 350 minutes in the first season 427 or 400 it was like 420 something in the second season there was over 600 minutes this season really? so it's almost double of what season one was why why it's a sitcom it really is just a sitcom and to not rap with them like shit well it's not this is us that like, much time like it's i don't know yeah i mean the, the only parts i had gotten up to i i, I was i finished watching not finished watching i stopped watching at the amsterdam episode right before it i guess the Amsterdam uh, episode was I the best was amazing ep- that is I, the best episode of the season i'm gonna finish watching for sure but um the i did like the addition of a zlatan character because that is like dude he he you want it spoiled? Yes. Leaves the team. God, Leaves the team man, completely. They smart. don't they don't address it until the final episode and he sends them like a box of t-shirts. That was smart though, to adding that character. It was like awesome. One of the funniest characters in like the entirety of soccer. It was awesome. He just leaves. He just leaves. No, like literally just like one like the game ends and like his locker is just cleared out and he like announces his retirement. Did you ever hear about the Zlatan uh LeBron James story? No. It's so fucking funny. So uh, <laughs> He's way, I, lo, I, I, I do have a soft spot for LeBron, but he's so corny. I can't imagine him hanging out with like Zl- Zlatan, like just yeah. an absolute rock star of an athlete. Dude, it, it's so fucking. So LeBron sent a copy of his jersey to Zlatan Ibrahimovic as a gift when he visited Los Angeles. Zlatan signed the jersey and sent it back to LeBron. <laughs> That's the shit I'm talking about. Dude, exactly. The fucking best. That's why that's what made him or I guess he's still playing. I don't really know. That's what makes him the best, man. He's, he's fucking awesome. He's got that. Uh. I don't know if it already came out, but he does have a movie. I think so. Yeah. Did it come out? Uh, I'm not sure. I'll yeah, he's got like a bi- he has a biopic coming. Out. I'll never forget watching him as a kid. He was in like IX and he did like he deked out like 15 cameras and people to score. I was like, that's the guy I want to be. Not even close. He's one footballer where I look at him and I'm like, he could play other sports, mm-hmm. like very easily, so like tall. many American sports. He would have excelled at. All right. Here's yours. All right. Folks, Ted Lasso has officially ended and people are upset with how this final season ended. Even if the legacy is tainted by the ending, we will always remember it for inspiring the little Uzi Vert lyrics. I flew your bitch out to Texas. We in El Paso. Then I farted while she blew me. Call call that head gasso. That's a good one. That is a good one. That's a solid one. You you needed more enunciation in the rap parts, but. Yeah, listen. Listen. I'm not going to say it, but we got to be careful with these rap lyrics on this show. That's fair. That's a very good point. All right. I'm sitting, I'm sitting you God, we're not live. This one doesn't have a folks in it, but it's just the easy setup. Okay. We haven't done these in so long. Okay. The Ted Lasso series finale aired this Tuesday night. But before we get to that, we'd like to talk to you about the dangers of pornography for the next 10 minutes. There we go. That's the joke about the PSAs. Yeah, the <laughs> fucking nonstop PSAs and that. Oi, do you think it's a good idea to share a nude? Oi, bruv. Listen, she sent it. She wanted it to be out there. No, no, no. You shouldn't send them. It's like, yeah, dude, we fucking get it. Delete everything off your phones right now. Um. Okay, so that said last. So the next thing, this is one, this is just random trailer we, we came across. Hidden Strike. Uh, this movie that's very clearly built to rake up money like Wolf Warrior 2 style in China. Uh, it is Jackie Chan, John Cena, Pilo Aspect. Oh, I like Pilo Aspect. He should be more things. Uh, two ex-Special Forces soldiers must escort a group of civilians along Baghdad's Highway of Death to safety in the Green Zone. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what is the highway? Hi- the Highway of Death. It's That's a real thing. Highway uh, of Death in Baghdad? Yeah, that's from uh, the first Gulf War. When they okay. blew up all the retreating 
uh, Iraqi army shit. I will say it does. It does already get one point for not doing the nameless country, nameless, faceless yes. country with nameless, faceless government. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like Kablikistan or some <laughs> shit. Like they just make it all up. Uh, the trailer is fucking goofy. Uh, like most of these like low budget type of things. But it's just weird because it's Cena and Jackie Chan, like one of the biggest stars still in the in the East and one of the biggest stars in the West. Just in this movie, they got delayed into oblivion by COVID and also by the fact that John Cena oh. mentioned Taiwan in an interview for Fast 9, uh, which also kind of gave him a little oh bit of hiccup. Oh my gosh. John uh, Cena. John X-I-N-A. Cena. Bing Chilling. Bing Chilling the king. We'll see Juan. Bing Chilling. I fucking love him. I have the, I still have the picture of John C- of um, the John Cena, like the Mao Zedong one. I put up uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. portraits at her house. Still, isn't, still there. No one's changed it and uh, barely noticed. Uh, but yeah, the trailers, or whatever. But like, it's just it's just a fucking weird thing to see. Like, just John Cena, who it's not like he's like fucking Christian Bale or some shit. But like, it's weird to see an actor of his blockbuster status in America just like doing this like tiny thing that's not getting any really attention at all in uh, with Jackie Chan. Like in this yeah, it's like the Matt Damon, the the Great Wall, Great Wall, movie, yeah. When he did that shit, shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> and that was the, like Willem Dafoe and someone and else. And too, he had right? the the ponytail. Yeah, that was so fucking stupid. It was it was him, Defoe, and someone else, right? I I never saw it. I looked. I mean, I saw the first air and was immediately out. Well, it was like them finding like like demons and creatures and creepy. I, I do think that if you ask like the average Chinese person what does an American look like, they would point to John Cena. Yeah, <laughs> be like, yeah, yeah, just short, buff, uh, kind of just cartoonish characteristics. Dude, what a fucking cast. Jesus Christ. It's Matt Damon, Pedro Pascal, and Willem Dafoe. Pedro Pascal was in yeah. that? What the fuck, dude? That's crazy. And that movie's bad, bad. Um, and the score is by the dude who did um, uh, Game of Thrones. Raman uh, Juwadi. Juwadi. Yeah. He was a beast. Uh, but yeah, that movie stunk. It sucked ass. Yeah, this this movie looks fucking dog shit. Is yeah. it going to get an American release? It's. I'm sure it will. If it's absurd enough, like, it's small. like uh, what's it called was? Wolf Warrior? Yeah. Like, I might check it out. I like Wolf Warrior for what it was. Yeah, like some of those is Chinese movies. They're they're much like I don't want to compare like international movies to each other, but like chi- like the Chinese market and then like the Tollywood Bollywood, where they really do kind of flourish in being ridiculous. Yes. And the more I, the more ridiculous, the more I can get into it. Yeah. Um. If, actually, like, who's the bad guy? Was it Frank Grillo? Was the bad guy? I think in Wolf Warrior too. That like, sounds right. I think that that's exactly right. They get dudes right. like that to be bad guys in it, which I always love. Frank Gr- Frank Grillo, I bet, has made a large chunk of his career earnings in china oh yeah all right here's yours all right let's see <clears throat> what can i say folks i'm just so excited for hidden strike but cena chan folks cena chan sounds like a mu- message board for the terminally ill cena is, it, is it clicking <laughs> it's so stupid no what what is cena well, cena like you know how cena visits the terminally ill a lot oh fuck and chan like 4chan or something yeah message now board. i get there it go. i got the chan part yeah. immediately <laughs> it reminds me it wasn't that onion bit where it was uh <laughs> just a message board with 10 year olds with term- terminal terminal yeah. cancer what was that uh it was i think it was um bad news like <laughs> there's no diagnosis yet but uh chris pratt's been waiting outside this <laughs> kid's room for the last three days uh okay i'm sending you mine let's do it this is the last one. Actually, I did write one for the next piece, but ah, we can wait on that. Ted Lasso. I'm so excited to see this one. John Cena might be the victim of Hollywood typecasting. Fresh off Peacemaker, he has once again taken a role featuring a homophobic father as he will star in the next movie with Jackie Chan. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> People forget about that. His kids hate his ass. Dude, what? his daughter is homeless. Yeah. Uh, the, the, they fight he fucking hates their ass damn i didn't even think about that um all right jackie's a legend but he may have he may or may not have some very problematic views about the world (laughs) some family issues to say the least uh the last thing there's a new trailer for seth rogan's teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem um a big new thing i'll be before we even talk about it i'll just be frank i don't get teenage mutant ninja turtles never have i don't think i will i've never been a fan and it's not like a thing where i watch i'm like i hate this this sucks it's just like I never connected with it ever. So like I don't totally understand it. 
Uh, it, it just does have it's Seth Rogen's big thing, though. He has Hannibal Burris, Rose Byrne, John Cena and Jackie Chan are both in this as well, ironically or coincidentally. Uh, Ice Cube, Paul Rudd, Post Malone, Giancarlo Stanton. Jeff Rose directing it. He co-wrote and co-directed. You just say Giancarlo Stanton? Giancarlo. He's in this movie? Yeah. The baseball player. You know what I was talking about. Esposito. I wrote down Stanton, too. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what the fuck? We got batting, Mike Stanton up in here? He's batting 310 in fucking... He's, he's fucking I was so confused for a second. John, I wrote you know, he'd down actually, John Carlos Stanton. He'd actually be crazy. good as... What's his face? Well, um, sure. No, buddy with the mask and the baseball bat. Uh, dude, again, this is most of it's beyond me. I know the names of the original dudes, and that's it. But Jeff Rose directing it. He co-wrote and co-directed Mitchell's First of the Machines, which is, I think, one of oh. our... Other than like Spider Verse, probably like our top ish animated movies of like the last oh, few years. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, super awesome. Uh, again, like all the characters in here, it's just the IP of for me. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I've just never connected with it. I don't know. That's surprising. That really is. Well, it's because uh, it's I so bizarre and weird and turtles. out there. I don't know what it, what it is about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It really is like an ad lib of just shit that kids like. Yeah. <laughs> it's like mutants, teenagers, pizza, turtles, fighting. I feel like it just wasn't popular when I was like, because like I was like grow, when I, I was what seven years old in two thousand. So like that's when I was like watching cartoons and shit, like you know like yeah. more consciously. And like I don't feel like I was wa- I'd never watched like a teenage Ninja, Ninja Turtle thing. I was watching. They didn't have great great cartoons when we were growing up. Yeah. I feel like I feel like now they no have presence really. Like the video games are all in like SNES and shit. That's true. Which, like. My first game system was PS One. So I mean, my my really only big exposure was the not live i guess live action movies if you want to call them that with mm-hmm. the puppets which i i really enjoyed but I never that those i never liked but i now, did like the well now, I, I to a degree enjoyed the the bay ones for what they were i don't know man they're just like big turtles and they each have their own weapon and their own color it's like you get to it's like you get to pick your own team basically <laughs> like you pick who you like you can bow staff sigh uh nunchucks and who's the last one he's a sword right just a regular sword uh like donatello i think has the sword i don't know why do they conceal their identities with the mask does anyone are they afraid they're gonna <laughs> that is a very confuse good them with a different mutated turtle dude <laughs> what's the deal what the there? fuck what's the deal there i think it's just a ninja thing or it's no it's for the audience why we could tell who's who without other than just i the guess weapons. that's true why would they not wear like full ninja garb or nothing at all they're fucking turtles they're, they're giant anthropomorphic turtles like like no everyone knows what they who they are it's not like there's any other ones it's just the four they should have let dana carvey make an appearance <laughs> the turtle himself uh but yeah no i'm, I'm excited to watch this because like seth rogan i feel like usually when he's involved with something i will like it for the yeah. most part i mean i'd have to look through his filmography right now to find like what is the last thing he's been involved with that i didn't like invincible he did it's true. Future Man, he did. Uh, and this is like from a production standpoint, although obviously he did voice and... He's got Platonic going right now, which I've enjoyed so yeah. far. Um, He's usually involved with stuff that works, I would say. Let's see. There's some where it's like... Eh, like uh, um, Super Mario Brothers, was good. That, was that movie he did with Charlize? That was just okay. That was... I actually was really bad. enjoyed that. Uh, not the campaign. Long shot. Long shot. Yeah. yeah. That was very funny when he infiltrates the... Uh, the the white supremacist uh meeting and he's like getting the nazi tattoo yeah getting a swastika tattoo and it gets like halfway done <laughs> let's see let's see his producer page because i know he's he's done so many things that like again i genuinely do for the most part like so maybe the, that he'll be like the thing that makes me like this more the animation style also very is it full-on claymation or is it like a claymation like blended like i would have guessed blended with something yeah it, it is uh, very funky looking. I like that. Invincible Darkwing Duck. They made a new Darkwing Duck. What the fuck? Uh, unti- untitled 90s project. How is it? Un- oh, it's that's not previous. Okay, yeah. Invincible Platonic Joyride, which I st- I need to see that actually. Wait, Joyride? Is that out? I think it. No, actually, no, that's not out. You're right. The, boys the trailers to that look very funny. Yeah. The, he was an EP on The Boys. Uh, okay. Pam and Tommy. Pam, yeah, Pam and Tommy, which that Fine. fell off a little bit, but yeah. the beginning of that was very good. American uh, Pickle would be the last thing I really did not like from him. Yeah, American Pickle was. stunk. Good Boys was in. Eh. I thought Good Boys was very funny. Future Man was very, very. The first two seasons of Future Man are so good. 
game over. <laughs> oh, blockers. We love blockers. We talk about that all the time. Sausage party, but he was, these are some things where just he was sort of involved in it. Neighbors uh, too. More from an actor thing. But yeah, like usually when he's involved with something, I like it. It's just I need to get over a hump with enjoying these massive. I'll be honest, they, they, may, they may just not be for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that also just could be the thing. It, it's like there is shit like that, especially from like late 80s and all that. Like, um, what's a good example? Oh, uh, I was going to say Transformers, but I, I just saw Transformers. Are you allowed to talk about yesterday. it? I am not. Okay. And it is shocking how long I need to wait to talk about it. Like usually There's, social embargoes are like you, you week or two before. This is like the day before. Until does it, talk doesn't about it come out in like two weeks? June 8th. Or it comes out June 9th. I can't talk about it. Until so that's like next week. June 7th, I think, which is crazy. But, that uh, is very strange. Yeah, especially uh, I can't fucking say anything. I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, I will just say my hype for the movie is building. Yes, it uh. should be building. Uh, that's the only thing I think I'll say about it. Um, but like other things, like other Hasbro shit from the '90s, where like, people were really into it, and it, like like fucking, there's a big one I'm missing here. My Little Pony. Definitely not My Little Pony. But cat, there's, there's cat dog. Like, that. like GI Joe, for example. Like GI Joe, and never. Yeah, I never got into GI Joe either. Like or those cartoons or any of that shit. Although I did always like me and my brothers would always buy like the World War II ones, which I feel like aren't actually real gi joe they're more like you know what i mean. I never played with gi joe toys in general yeah. i had, had a couple a, i had a lot of transformers toys a whole lot of those because those were always just sick i don't think i ever had a transformer which you just fold them up you could like expand them yeah but i was more we were bionicle kids oh dude bionicles are so they forgotten sick dude such a forgotten era of toys they'd come in, like those little tubes oh and it'd be fucking impossible to out. snap those balls into little yeah those the little joints. cups oh my gosh and they were cool because you could like kinetically play with them more than you could with anything Lego, really. Like, oh yeah, fucking, we were smacking them into each other. We might have like we have like stabs and knives and shit. Were you ever a Beyblades kid? No, dude, I was a hardcore. I, I bladed, I bladed hard. I, I stuck more to like cards. I had a little shit. dome in my basement. Have the boys over, do some Beyblading. <laughs> oh yeah, we'd Beyblade all night. We did a um, a lot of let it rip. A lot of card games. Like, uh, I think I've told, I've told this on the podcast before. I used to be in like, like Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments. Yeah. Which were a blast at Toys R Us. Did you have the, uh. No, I always wanted one, but it was I had, too expensive. I had, I had one one time. And then it, it, I think it broke within like two weeks. Like it broke <laughs> so sense. fast. I never watched the, the, uh, anime for Yu-Gi-Oh. I think I did when it was on from. when I was a kid, but I think it kind of stunk from what I remember. Mm. There's yeah. that. And there's obviously Pokemon ruled. What Pokemon they- cards were awesome. What are the characters' names from Yu-Gi-Oh? The guy, main guy's name Yugi. is Yugi. Yeah, is, Yugi. Um, I just remember he had a crazy deep voice, and his like nemesis. Fuck, I want to say his nemesis' name was like Jesse or some shit. That's. It was like I swear to God, it was like just some like average prep school name. Let's see. You gotta make characters. He had like allies and stuff too, like his own Sado Kaiba. That doesn't feel mm-hmm. right. That is right. Oh, Joey Wheeler is that his? Joey name? Wheeler. Joey Wheeler. Why? Yes. Yes, massive hair, my God! Um, what to do, Yugi? But Sado, I think, is the bad guy because he had the the blue eyed yes. dragon. Yes, yes. I think Joey Wheeler was his pal. They were Egyptian, I think, for some reason. Yeah, because he had the pyramid like necklace. Yes, remember all those Egyptians with blonde, spiky hair. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's that's our that's our news. Shout out to the one turtle or the uh, team and T joke I wrote because it was remarkably hard to write good jokes about. And, well, any of these, but like TMNT specifically, uh, folks, there's a new TMNT on the horizon. And folks, let me tell you, the last person to be this excited for a turtle to come was Meadow Soprano. There we go. And That's a good entourage. One. That took a second, but he got there. Uh, OK, so um, I just finished today just like the what's coming to streaming stuff. It'll be coming out on like on the Barcelona blog and all that. Uh, a couple big ones. Stop me if you have yeah. one you like uh, the Breakfast Club. You didn't stop me, so I assume you hate Breakfast Club. No, uh, I like the Breakfast Club. No, it's just always on streaming. Yeah. Bruce Almighty. Uh, Great movie. Dune, the original. The David Lynch one. Uh, funny People. Remarkably not very funny, but it's not funny. It's actually a good movie. Good though. movie. Um, Groundhog Day. Uh, Hook, the Italian job uh, with the new one, the good one. Don't fucking come at me with the um, Michael Caine shit. Uh, Jarhead kicking and screaming. Uh, the Kingdom, Magic Mike, Mean Girls. This is all Netflix, by the way. I f- probably forgot to mention that. Uh, Spider Man 1 through 3, Stuart Little, Surf's Up, T2 Judgment Day, which T2 Judgment Day I could watch a trillion times yeah. over and over again. Um, 
to Leslie coming to Netflix. The one of the most memed about. Oh, movies. the Andrea Riseborough. Yeah, the Riseborough movie. one. I'm not going to watch it out of spite. Mm -hmm. uh, Dunkirk is coming out the 12th. Uh, Extraction 2. Another one which I still can't right. talk about. That one I'm fucking pumped be for. Be as fired up as you can. It should be. Like, I think I could say this without it coming off as a sentiment. It should be a day marked in your calendar when this movie drops. Uh, I will. And. Get the go to your friend with the biggest TV's house and surround system. Yeah, sometimes the theaters, like a couple of the smaller theaters in the in the city, will play. Yeah, uh, at least here we'll play the movie. I'm kind of hoping they do that. Actually, Angelica, today, here in town, the one in uh, on Houston mm -hmm. is playing season season three of I think you should leave. Really? <laughs> yeah. I guess it's only the last like an hour. Yeah. Um, the, the entire series of suits drops on. Hell suits yeah. In the suits. I've never watched Suits a day in my life, but I know people love Suits. All right. The first two to three seasons, like most of these shows, like the first yeah, two to three USA. seasons are actually very, very. No, I wouldn't say very, very good, but I'll give it one very, very good. Mm -hmm. um, banger intro, like cool setup. And then it just kind of meanders into like just legal drama. And mm -hmm. it's like, uh, I don't I don't really want this. I think. And then, of course, you got Meghan Markle in there. Yes. Who's right. just incredibly hot. Mm -hmm. incredibly hot in that show can't speak about her that way anymore her majesty is incredibly hot sorry uh and then june 29th the witcher season three part one the last cabal season comes out uh it's just kind of a bummer you know uh that what's his name liam hemsworth is gonna be taking over i'm so they made so many witcher things like like the other like they made the anime which wasn't very good they made that fucking michelle yo one was awful you think they would have made a good one by oh now? well no they, the first season i guess the of first Witcher's season of the witch but like i actually kind of like the second season too yeah, but now they're just dumped. Well, Cavill, I guess, is leaving because he doesn't like the way that they're going so far off book, uh, which sucks. Just let him run the show, dude. Or just listen. Let's just stick to the books. The books are good. Exactly. Good. There's there's plenty enough drama in there, too. Like that, There's enough spiciness. Like him and Yennefer fuck mm, all the time. Lot. All the time in the books. Like you got that spiciness that all the Netflix shows need. Apparently, I, he didn't want them to fuck a lot. Cabal. which is i saw that quote and i was like yeah. did you read the book because they are all they do is fuck they are horny for each other uh on hbo max 310 to yuma i love 310 to yuma the new one that with with like oh Foster, yeah christian who Bale. directed that that's uh, that's that mangled Mang james mangled yeah dude ben foster's so good in that yeah that crazy good. that movie rocks uh army of darkness classic uh big daddy click if you want to cry demolition man dog day afternoon which is a very underappreciated okay movie with uh, Pacino and John Cazale. Uh Dumb and Dumber, Eastern Promises, another, very, that's a Cronenberg, right? Very good movie. By the way, how would you, after that big debate yesterday, the branding kicked off, those three 90s comedies, he had Dumb and Dumber as his number one. And then he went, I think he said Austin Powers, and then Billy Madison were the three movies. That's crazy. I would go Austin Powers. Dumb and Dumber's last, no question. Billy Madison day. and then Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's what I put out. They're all three fucking fantastic. Oh, so yeah. It's, it's not it's splitting hairs, really. But, but like, I'm thinking about the one that I will go back and rewatch all the time, which is the mark of a great not comedy. Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. Dumb and Dumber is not the one. It's Very I true. will rewatch Austin Powers any day. Like those jokes just continue to hit. Yeah. And you would think they would get old and you would grow out of them. But for some reason, it just gets funnier. <laughs> uh, Grease, Itonia, Tonya. I would maybe rewatch that. I love I, Tanya. Uh Jackie Brown, great Quentin movie. Jeremiah Johnson, which I haven't watched in a very long time. Uh, Little Shop of Horrors, Moneyball, Monster in Law, Moonlight, Police Academy, Radio. Wow. Radio. That's a big month for Netflix. This is HBO Max. Oh, this is Swap HBO Max. Starting at 310 Yuma. Now we're on HBO Max. Okay. Uh, Ready Player One, Selena, The Evil Dead, Hurt Locker, X Men Days of Future Past. I don't know how that works. Considering it's owned by Disney, but maybe there's some rights thing carry over from Fox. I don't fucking know. And then I think they just lease that shit out yeah. to each other. And then June fourth, the Idol, the one everyone's been waiting for. Oh, with <laughs> Abel, the Weekend, Tesfaye. Not don't call him the Weekend anymore. That's just don't call so him so annoying. The name of the one of the most that. famous R and Bs or, or just pop singers that there is right now. Or else I'm going to start calling your songs by by your stupid, not your stupid name. I don't want to say it, but your, by your real name. Yeah. Like, it's, stop. It's fucking dumb. The, the I mean, weekend. This movie, it got, it had such a crazy, we talked about this on one of the last episodes, but like their production history was crazy. They fired the director after 90% was done. And then Sam Levinson took over, redid the entire thing for tens of millions of dollars. And then it was so graphic sexually that the French didn't like it. He's so slimy. Which is, he is. He's, he's, so, a, he's a fucking freak. 
He's a real. Twitter freak. really needs to focus there. They're they're very focused on uh, Taika with TD right. I don't know if you saw that. Everyone's freaking out on Taika right now. For what? Because he did this interview uh, with oh. Vogue. It was him and Rita with Vogue, but oh, he actually did make a really good quote, and it was like, you know, I don't really worry too much about like how the public perceives my works. Like they don't remember. No one remembers who directed Citizen Kang. Like I don't think I'm that important. And then everyone's like, of course I remember who directed, or not Citizen Kane. Nobody remembers who directed Casablanca. And like people were like, of course I remember who directed Casablanca. And it's like, no, you're a film bitch though. You're, you yeah, like either A, you're just like, you're very much tapped into the film community and yeah. you make up 0.1% of 1% of the population, or you just Google it yeah. really quick. Nobody remembers Michael Curtis. Yeah. Nobody, like nobody remembers him. And I think that is a good point of Tycho. Like, most of these directors we we love right now, like you're just not going to remember them 40 years from now. I feel like that's not even the point of the quote people should focus on. It should be the other where you, if it's like, I don't care what people view, how people view my work. It's like you should to a degree, like you should yeah. have artistic integrity. And like if you if you like what you're doing, like you should you like you should do that. You should not try and like associate too much to what other people yeah. want. But at the same time, like if you're do, what you're doing isn't working, then you should be actively making sure you're changing that if you're trying to make like a big blockbuster movie or whatever versus doing something more small like boy or whatever else hunt for the world of people um but yeah the idol i'm excited to watch it in the same way if there was like a scheduled train wreck like you're like hey 9 30 be at this stop there's two trains that are gonna collide i would be there and the same way i would be here i will be here june 4th to watch the Idol. yeah it's really unfortunate because i wish it was like a smaller cast without the weekend and like yeah. wasn't hbo because then it would just like fly underneath the radar i wouldn't have to Everyone's talk about it like memed into it's gonna be memed i'm gonna have to watch it yeah. <laughs> it's not something i'm really looking forward to at all um it, yeah like you said it just it just feels like i'm about to watch a train wreck um after that uh june 7th avatar the way of water also don't know how that works right so going to hbo yeah I'm assuming it's going to Max. Assuming, sorry, sorry going to Max. Yeah, I'm assuming it's going to the other one first. Um, and after that, will I watch that at home? June, I think I will. June 8th, A Star Is Born's coming back. I love Star Is Born. I could rewatch that again. I usually stop once he starts to go downhill. Yeah, it's one of those movies I watch the front half, <laughs> just don't have the balls to watch the back half. Yeah, it's so uh, sad. <laughs> the after that, Righteous Gemstones on June 18th, season three. I'm very pumped for that. You watched that, right? Mm -mm. No, no, I, I got to get you? on it. The uh, so Righteous Gemstone is like I think one of the more underappreciated shows going on HBO right now. And like obviously HBO puts out like all the premium comedy or, or premium television in general, but like it's just so fucking funny. Like it it Edie, Eddie Par or Edie Patterson is one of the funniest women in the world. Like every every time she speaks in that show is like a laugh out loud funny moment. So many great like small characters in it. Uh, it just like Danny McBride, dude. So he's like, he's like in his element. Yeah. In that series. Yeah. You should really watch it. That's like one of the best running comedy series right now. Uh, so Archie's Gemstone season three, June 18th. And then one of my favorites, personal favorites, and it hasn't been back in a long time. Uh, Warrior season three on June 29th. Warrior is one of the coolest martial arts experiments, I guess you'd say over the last like 10 years. It's really, really well choreographed action, like reminiscent of like almost the raid in certain mo in certain points. It's uh, Bruce Lee's brainchild. It's based on his writings and his daughter's a producer on it. Um, and just all these great people. Same guy that directed this was the showrunner for Banshee as well. Very similar vibes, like serial Western-ish in a way. Um, really, really good. All like expert fucking martial artists. Actually, one of the stars of the raid is in Warrior. And Andrew Koji, who I think the most recent thing most people have seen was that Bullet Snake Train. Eyes. Bullet Train and Snake Eyes, which it sucked that they fucked him in villa train dude he was just like a weak pussy bitch and like <laughs> one of the best martial artists you see they're doing a people. bullet train spinoff no. i think that was announced like a month ago but it's like are they doing a bullet train sequel not a spinoff sorry okay sequel but makes sense because like, i'd much actually i would much rather see a spinoff prequel with just lemon and tangerine dude, the fucking, they were the stars of the show dude the fucking the fucking like balls to think that we gave a fuck about the Sandra Bullock thing at the end. Dude, some of the worst. That's the worst wig I think I've seen ever. That was that was obscene. It, it, there's so many good parts. In there's that also movie. very clearly Sandra Bullock the whole time on the yeah. phone. Like yep. it was that's her voice. Wasn't yeah, I immediately recognized it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's, I would highly recommend both Warrior and um, Banshees if you've never watched them. They're awesome. 
then Hulu. I didn't get to Prime yet, but Hulu's got some Banshee videos. fucking rules. I ripped that last year. Banshee's so and it's, it's dude, it's very very similar vibes except way better fights. Okay. Way better fights. Um on Hulu as the fucking unsoundproofed studio walls let every single ounce or decibel oh, of that siren comes through. Like, that's a really long title for a yeah. show. As every decibel of the siren outside comes in through the studio walls. Uh Attack the Block, which is an awesome sci-fi movie if you've never seen it. Uh Borat. I feel like Borat's not one where like you're dying. I'm always dying to rewatch, but not like, really. Yeah, but it's there. Bronson, uh one of the ones that put Tom Hardy on the map. Day after tomorrow, which that's that's a TV cart movie for me in high school. Yeah, I watched that so many times in high school. I really like that movie. Me too. In terms of like disaster movies, I <laughs> think too. it's like towards the top. It's so stupid, <laughs> but like it works for some reason. Shouldn't work. Nothing about it should work. They survived the fucking like New York City flooding to the top of the fucking Statue of Liberty. Everything happens so fucking yeah. fast in that movie. Like Dennis. one second, like the 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 library is going underneath water, and then they like go away for a scene and you come back the whole city's frozen there's a boat in the middle of manhattan yeah like it happens so fucking fast and then it's just over yeah like it's just like they're like yeah all of the the climate problems are now done and and dennis quaid's like way to go son the worst cgi dogs you've ever seen i forgot about that oh my god i want to watch though i do i do love that movie uh freddie got fingered (laughs) i've never never seen it never gonna watch it fucking covers freaked me out i don't know why uh, from Paris with Love, which is a movie, it's dumb, but good dumb. I don't know if you ever watched that. John Travolta no. in, in full bald head oh, with uh, John Reese Myers, I think is his name. Uh, just like a dumb action movie. Goon, we were talking about recently. Uh, the Goonies, uh, Grown Ups 1 and 2, Hall Pass. Hall Pass. That movie I was so excited for. It really has did. a couple funny bits in it, yeah. but for the most part, very forgettable. Uh, that really he he takes the mental he's got the mental spank bank and yeah. he like goes ch, ch, ch. Mm. <laughs> very funny the Irish dude with the tiny cock I always remember that scene too very uh, funny uh, Idiocracy which we were talking about you've never seen it right no I've seen it I've Who seen that a million times I've never seen it maybe it was Robbie Fox huh. movie rules my judge yeah that's right uh, man on or it was Clemmer I think um, man on wire uh, Mr. Deeds Mr. Nobody Notorious Predators Role Models Role Models we were talking about a lot do you like Mr. Nobody that's the that's that, the Odenkirk one right that's just Nobody right uh, you're right uh, Predators Role Models Role Models we were talking about recently I just uh, I, when I was blogging it, I just put in the quote just the one scene um, <laughs> just fuck you Miss Daisy it's yeah. every single time dude fucking crushes me you white you've been athlete you're white you've been athlete uh and then bloopers for that always very funny semi-pro uh three identical strangers is one of my favorite documentaries yeah very much worth the watch twilight franchise and vice vice i have not rewatched and seen in the theater and i don't think i will no it was actually not bad no it's not by no stretch is it a bad movie but it's not one where i'm like i need to go rewatch vice i've said it a million times now mckay just he needs to get off the political spectrum yeah. and like go back to comedy. Like I respect his like endeavor into the dramatic world, and I think he really wanted an Oscar yeah. to be recognized for his talents. But like, dude, you're really fucking good at making comedies. Just go back to it. It's good when he traces it, like Big Short, right? Like when he traces that world, I feel like he's better off. But when he's directly on it, yeah, like Big Short's really funny. Like politics for him should be like a clip, basically. Like, <laughs> yeah, stay away from direct contact if you can. Yes. Just go around the edge. Make use the alphabet or something. All right, McKay. Uh it's always sunny season 16, June 8th. Um Flame and Hot, the Evil Longoria Cheetos movie, June 9th. I'm part, sure. very excited for that. Dune, the actual Dune. Uh well, no, that was mean maybe, but that is the actual Dune. June I mean 10th. David Lynch would say the same thing. Yeah. So <laughs> uh and then June twenty second, the bear, uh, season two. The yeah. bear is awesome. I'm fucking pumped for it. That second to last episode, the single take episode, and I'm just a bitch for these fucking shows called The Long Take, but that yeah. one take episode is so fucking good. It's crazy. I got to rewatch it, actually. Dude, and if you have you ever worked in a kitchen? No. It really is. I've I mean, not like exact, but- like, because, like, I mean, they got their hair down and shit. Like, you just, mm-hmm. wouldn't, just wouldn't fly shit like that. But, like, a lot of it, like, that stress and that, like, anxiety of, like, every minute counts. You got to, like, keep counting your head. All that shit, like, that is dead on. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's what the mostly the consensus was for other people that have worked in, even if it wasn't like brigade style kitchen or whatever, like all kitchens. like Scoffier. Yeah. Just like the same kind of like fucking mental clock anxiety inducing shit. And like that scene where like the online orders are coming in over and over and over again. Yes. It's just you feel it. Uh, Barbarian, June 25th. 
Uh, we love Barbarian. One of the best horror movies probably the last like two years. Kirk said, Kirk Menahan said that was the best male performance of the year, which Justin Long in that movie, That's which a, is a, certainly a take. That is definitely a take. <laughs> uh, and then Grand Budapest Hotel, June 30th. I might, um, watch, I might watch that just to get in the mood for Asteroid City. Yeah, Asteroid City, yeah. But yeah, nothing else that crazy coming which out. Which we also talked to Rupert Friend. We did. About uh, working with our boy Wes. Yeah, seemed to be a fan. He, I think he's part of his crew now. After two movies, two in movies. A, two movies in a row. I feel like that definitely cements you. Yeah, you're part. You're part of the crew. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna do a little. I think you should leave action. Uh, you can go first. I'll go what, are, second. what are we doing here? Uh, just a draft of the skits. I gave you the full list, right? Yeah, you did. You did. I got it. You got it. I know what my first one. My first one's gonna be the. It's got to be the zipline skit. The zipline. The yeah. The zipline was like the show. immediate like when. <laughs> I was like, all right, this is good. I was like, this is a good setup. I wonder where they're going to go with it. Fucking zipline. He's just on the fucking zipline. Will not get off of it. He's fighting with the zipline guy on the show. The summer, the summer love. Oh, my God. He's like, he's like, you're making up rumors about your fellow summer lovers. I sincerely believe in my heart that he is on drugs. Yeah, dude. The fucking the second the lady said it, I was laughing. Because I was waiting, like, okay, what's the drop? And he's like, you wouldn't get off the zipline. <laughs> just every- the way he does the zipline, too, is so funny. The legs are kicking like a yeah. little girl. Like, it's so. It's like, it's just like you, you're fighting with like 365 Entertainment, the company that runs the zipline or whatever it was. But he eats his dinner too fast. He's eating his dinner so fast. Like people are trying to talk to him. He's like, yeah, yeah. And he just yeah. like runs back to the pool. Doing it over and over and over again. It's like if you've ever been away. like, if you've ever been like a ten, as a 10 year old, like if you've been to like a place, like a hotel or anything, like when you were a kid, you didn't have a pool at home. Yeah. And then you go someplace with a pool, when it, especially if it has like a zipline or a slide. Like you're just going to hang out on the slide and on the zip line the whole time. Dude, the fact that he was on like it wearing a sun shirt too. Yeah. It's so much more yes. kid like. You know what I mean? Like if he was like shirtless, it'd be different. But I feel like the fact that he was literally looked like a little kid just going on the zip line over and over. I don't know what's waiting for me at home. <laughs> yeah. What does he say to the other guy? But not the drugs guy. There's another guy. He's like, he's like, yeah, I think you told him you're not even here for, for love. <laughs> just cuts them and going, honestly, I could be. A, he's like, I want to be alone the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> He go, and just cuts back to him. He goes, "No." I never, it was. It reminds me of um, the almost like the nacho skit from. Last yes, season, yes. Right? That's what me and Troy were talking about the season before, and like there is a lot uh, of bits where you could tell they were kind of recycled, like setting wise from some of the other ones, which isn't necessarily in this case a bad thing because they're executed different and they're still very funny. Um, but yeah, so the summer one that was my number three on my big board. Okay. My number one, though, I'm getting it. The egg video game. The egg the, video game. The egg video game. I don't think I've laughed that hard in a while from that that reveal. Like, the guy just oh, fucking I... yelling at him in corporate speech. <laughs> he just pulls it down. He's like, oh, he's got fucking pubes. What the <laughs> hell? Like, what the hell? He's got pubes. And he turns around. He's fucking it's egg asshole. You can't look up porn at work. He's like, it's not porn. That's an egg. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, it's a nude it's a, egg. It's a nude egg that I won from my game. <laughs> He's like, oh, a little <laughs> porn at the office. He's not like a little porn. <laughs> it was just everything about it was killing me. Like the, him playing as whatever, but then like the when they he buys the eggs and then submits <laughs> it. He's like, oh, fucking one egg, forty eggs now. <laughs> Somebody actually designed. The, they had that game designed for yeah. the show. I don't know if you saw that, but they paid someone to design the game so it looked realistic. So stupid. The fucking egg was like. 8 bit like it was like looked like a Game Boy game on your computer. Dude, that's like the songs that they invent in the show. Like every song being made up is fucking crazy too. Uh but I'll do egg video game um which I I was dying at and then I'll back to back it with the driving crooner. Yeah. The driving crooner was so good. The, <laughs> I I was trying to figure out where they were going to go with it so bad. I was <laughs> like what is he doing? Yeah. Is, I thought he was like trying to fake play the trumpet at first cuz yeah. he was listening to that like swing music yeah and then it just like it just peels back to like his window he's just got that fucking decal on it i love this, this he does this a lot where in i think you should leave her it's like he'll he'll tap he'll put something out or use a word where you need to google it i was yeah. like what the fuck is a crooner i looked it up and i'm like oh it's just yeah it's like frank, frank sinatra. sinatra yeah, yeah. <laughs> michael buble he's speeding up so that he's like no they're gonna try and make it look fake and then the frat boy being the frat like, boy like i'm gonna fucking I'm gonna, kill you I'm gonna fucking kill you dude uh, that was a really good one. Um, all right, you get back to back now. All right. Um, first one, I'm going to go with the Tim Meadows wedding. The Tim Meadows wedding. Funny. F- like Tim Meadows is just <laughs> so underappreciated. He's so, so underappreciated. It's one of those skits. And we had talked about it on the episode that we kind of lost where 
sometimes these skits are completely dependent on one one actor just carrying it through and that is what like i don't think this skit is that funny like on paper but tim meadows delivery on everything is so fucking funny like him puking like the the <laughs> the physicality of that puke <laughs> so nasty then him just time. immediately yeah he immediately without like even missing a beat after the puke goes it wasn't enough time to think of something funny barney's got hair the little the cloth, cloth is cloth it's just is. little hairs and then what did the other guy do he did something funny too oh yeah he, he started like doing, doing the, the four dance. Dance. yeah he started like, that doesn't sound like a fun game and he's like what do you know about games fuck uh, i gotta fucking killed me tim meadows god everything he did there was just perfect mm -hmm. it's not enough time give me this give me this, this shutter shades let's go again it's like no i already got my perfect shot with the bride fuck that was a really good one all right so tim moto's what tim meadow wedding and then and then i'll go with uh i'll go with the i'm gonna go with the vr shopping the that, vr that, shopping really i, I that killed me. me that killed me that yeah. really killed me VR one that was my number twenty three. I, I don't know why that was so funny. Well, I know why because it was like he was fucking high. Like he was just like I don't know why it was killing me. It was like just like that. I've been there. I've mm. been I've been in that exact spot where you kind of just sit there and you're like, did I forget how to breathe? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, he's just like acting like the fucking VR headsets like breathe, cancer. Fucking breathe. <laughs> he's like I don't I don't know I'm all crossed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he stops my fingers, can't figure out how to breathe again oh when it comes gosh. off. And he's looking at his hands, just screaming, ow. Yes. All right. Well, maybe I went a little early on that. I don't care. Uh, all right. For mine, I'll get uh, Beck Bennett in the friend group pyramid scheme, which was very fucking funny. <laughs> I tweeted it out, but it, it really just does continue the trend of an yep. SNL actor going on this show and being the funniest they've been in years. <laughs> Beck Bennett hasn't. I can't remember the last time I saw Beck Bennett be funny. Yeah. <laughs> I was annoying at a party, so now I have to pay the most. <laughs> like, when what do you mean you're annoying at a party? Now I was just, I was just trying to fight everybody there. I thought it'd be really funny. Him when he fucking stuffs the, the first, hamburger in his pocket. First off, his suit. <laughs> Tim's suit in that skit was it's so fucking suit. big. When he slams his hands on the table and he just farts. <laughs> yeah, like, well, he's like, "Don't worry about it. People slam. Sometimes it slips out. It's no big deal." And she's like, "It's just really bad." <laughs> He's like, uh, you don't have friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want you. I want this guy right here. Uh fuck. That was a really good one. Uh and then I'll back to back that with a little forte ponytail skit. That one really got See, me. That, that one was low on my list. That one got me bad. Because it wasn't the phone part is what killed me. Yes. See, so it's not necessarily the rest of the part. It's him yelling at the other ponytail guy. He's <laughs> like, like, I what? can do what I want. Why does he country? hate? Why do they hate each other? And then him just being like, he's like, text my text whoever it was. And he's like, it's just a lot of screenshots of cigars. <laughs> <laughs> it was like 500 screenshots of cigars. And then when he goes to text the person, the last thing he texted that person was a screenshot of a cigar. And then it was like, just Google a picture of big bowl of diarrhea and send it to the Mater D. Uh, the ending of that one was maybe a little bit shifty, but like it, I think the majority of that skit really got me, specifically the the cigars and him screaming at the other ponytail guy. And just the, the general, like the general thesis of it or whatever, like they come over, it's like, your car is parked illegally. I had to crawl underneath your car what <laughs> in the picture of his fucking ass the it looks in the way ass. she goes she goes well it looks like it goes right past your butthole mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so i'll go with those two now you get back to back um i will go with Ooh, ooh, tough i'm gonna go with the studio audience mm. him 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 trying to <laughs> air out his grievances for the fucking the limo company and the watch <laughs> with it that 500 <laughs> springs i didn't think they were gonna show it yeah they did i lost my shit where they where they show the date and he like goes to show her the watch and it just a million springs right in her face just fucking to the dome and the fact that that the one wall in the, the, the one guy at the recording was like actually like wait what? he's like why he's like why don't you want to he's like what, what did they do yeah it's like he had a Super Bowl ring and he kept pushing and the wall for it. see it like come in and like grab yes. the ice. <laughs> Fuck, oh that was a good God. one. Um, and then I will go with. Oh. I'll go with the uh, the Shirt Brothers. The Shirt Brothers. You like Shirt Brothers too? That was also, that was my 24 out of 25. I like the Shirt Brothers for the song, to be honest. It was a good song. The song fucking ruled. 
and I love that old guy. I think I, I think I just really like that, that old, old guy. Is, he's very funny. Very funny. The fact that it took him this long to find a like a place. Now in, he's in fucking everything everywhere all at once. Like he was. Like, he's like, yeah, we're shirt brothers. I thought we were shirt brothers. <laughs> he's like, I don't know. I just listen. You to think there might just be no rules? He's like, I listen to the song. And I don't know. <laughs> Kill me. He just like I, I just came in here and I wrecked up the whole place. He's like, so where do you want to start? Yeah, the old dude, the old guy. That guy is so good. Uh, I will do first the pay it forward chain. Yes, the pay it forward chain was very funny. Fifty five members, fifty five this, fifty five this. Like just going go down the list over and over. And then the guy going, you can afford it. You're rich. And then like the lady behind him, yeah, starts doing it. Starts doing it. He tries to pull out in his Honda, his ninety seven Honda yeah. Accord. And then, and then him like parking it because like, I could just fucking rock and running off. That that one got me really good. And then I'll back to back that with um. Huh, this is, it does get much harder here. I'll do the oh, fuck. There's so many good ones. I'll do the 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 closing skit, the Connor O'Malley one. Yeah, that was gonna be my next my yeah. next go around. The the Connor O'Malley ending skit. What, what did he call it? Like De- Devin's? No, he had a weird name. Doubt like. Fuck. He had a funny ass name, but it was like something's like. Now I gotta go fucking look it up. But like the name of his channel was very funny. Was he wearing a buff suit, or is he that buff now? Did you not notice that? No, I don't think he I looks massive in the fucking skit. I don't think I noticed. So that big, anymore. and the Franken the Frankenstein. I don't even understand what he was trying to do. No clue. I got no goddamn idea what it was supposed but to be. When he comes back into work, he's like, "Fuck, I can't think of anything funny." Yeah. I need your help. <laughs> Fuck, what was the name of the channel? The channel was so funny. He's like watching it off the side so his wife doesn't see. What the fuck did he call? And Connor O'Malley just continues the bit of he cannot do a skit without breaking. Tasty Time Vids, which has nothing to do with the video he posted with the fucking Frankenstein's girlfriend. His, he's, his laugh, everything about Connor O'Malley just kills me. He's so good. It, it really is hilarious. Every time he like he breaks just five times every mm-hmm. sketch. It is the Jimmy Fallon effect, but opposite. Where Jimmy Fallon used to just break and ruin ruin SNL bits. This is just hilarious every time he does it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, you get back to back. Um, I will go with the my the best girl I'm going with Patty Harrison hates mm. her boss. She uh, should have been in more skits this season. I was, there was, I was a upset. brutal, brutal lack of Patty Harrison this, yeah. this season. Because her her delivery really just she got perfect delivery for this for these kind of like comedic bets. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> he's like uh, rats are my dogs. <laughs> he's like she's like yeah yeah. I'm sorry to shut down the rats thing too so quickly. She's just like fucking torturing this like post post board cutout of her boss. That, that was one. the guy from the driving skit from last season. All right, I was trying to put that together. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, she's just hilarious. That, that was. It was funny. I was very high when I was watching these two, by the way. <laughs> That's so there's a few of these I'm looking at, and I actually do not remember them. <laughs> yeah, that one was very good, though. The uh, I just drank dog shit. Who fuck brings dog shit into a park? <laughs> um, and then I will go with the Tim Heidecker. The Heidecker one. That was gonna be my next one. If you didn't get yeah, it. yeah. I like I like that Heidecker skit. Heidecker skits. I think Jeff, Jeff put it in our group chat where the Heidecker bit, bits are like. They're the best when Tim just continues to elevate the absurdity and it mm-hmm. just got more and more absurd. Like, what was the club? It was a fucking club aqua or something. Yeah. The first one was club aqua. The other one was club like Halloween, Halloween town. Halloween yeah. town. Yeah. It's just so stupid. So stupid. <laughs> he's like, I'm outside. I know you're, he's like, I'm jacking off. He's like, no, I saw you go in. Jacked off in 15 minutes. Yeah. Which, yeah. <laughs> then he comes out. He's like, he's like, what about his wife? And he's like, no, no wife. And he's like, all right, honey, I'll see you get home. Be safe. He's walking around punching shit, seeing what's real. The deck at Club Aqua fell down. Yeah, oh, yeah I forgot the deck. Of- <laughs> Did anyone get hurt? He's like, so the club community is really hurting right now. <laughs> He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Did anyone get hurt? Kim Kardashian's head fell off. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so you get he- Heidecker heart monitor. I'll get the um, the Jason Schwartzman kid bit. Yes. I thought was very funny. Uh, just specifically the group that was following Tim Robinson around. So what are we doing thing. now? What are we doing next? It's just like he walks up. He just does this dumb dance <laughs> and they just immediately jump in and start doing it. It's like, is it, would this be funny? And he just starts humping the yeah. the door. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, hold on, you might get something there. And he's, he's having to do like increasingly weird things. And the fact that like there that is rooted in a real like sort of thing. Like people have to like, oh, stop me from talking about my kids. 
Oh, and I don't know if you have any friends with kids, but that's all they do talk about. Yes. He's like, this is the best line of my life. Yeah, Thank exactly. You. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about like actually other shit. Uh, so I'll take Jason Schwartz from Kid One and then I'll do, you know, which one really got me. And this is a little bit lower. I should have had it higher. Uh, the Fred Armisen kids one where he has like the fake. Yeah. <laughs> tries to scare his kids with that extremely fake video with the back. Like, the the, fuck, the, it looks back like fucking fake. <laughs> And yeah sunset lots or something like yeah, that yeah yeah. he's like the guy kept telling me that if he does well here he'll get in like the this the the something stunt crew and he's like i kept telling him i don't care about that i don't care about your thing this is my thing fred armison dude that's another guy like just like from xsnl whatever like you put him in these things and he just is so much better uh so i'll go with armison scaring his kids that is that his me. first time on i think you should leave i don't is think he ever in there. anything else what do you mean then like in any of the other ske sketches that have been on the show so, so no. far. Yeah. Well, Forte was in a second. That was the, and obviously Connor O'Malley. Was in a bunch. Um, next up, I'll go with another person who was very under, I think underserved this season or should have been more stuff. I'll go with the uh, Brian Robinson or not Brian. Am I just blanking on his name right now? Sam Richardson. Sam Richardson. What the fuck is Brian? Who the fuck is Brian Robinson? You just Tim Robinson him. With Brian. All right, well, I'm going with the Sam Richardson uh, Proposal Park sketch. Yeah, that would have been my next one if you didn't get it. Which the whole joke hinging on not just the wrestlers, the fact that the, the proposals are ruined, the surprise is ruined by the wrestlers, the, yes. not the fact that the fucking place is called Proposal Park. <laughs> Dude, oh, my gosh. I accidentally made the perfect ring, and he's just being like, I saw his dick, and it's redder than hell. Like It just, <laughs> just popped. His delivery on that was so good. Did your penis pop? Yeah. And those are all like real wrestlers too. Like that was like Eric Rowan. Like, oh, was kids. it? See, I yeah. didn't even know that. Yeah. And what they call him like toilet something. And he's like, the worst two are these two. I hope this guy dies. I hope he fucking dies. I hope <laughs> someone comes and kills him. And he just like flashes their address <laughs> yes, on yes. screen. But that was a really good one. Um, And then I will go with, see, this is where I'm getting into. Do I remember any of these? Oh, the doggy door. Doggy door. Yeah. The doggy door pit. That's going to be, I think, the most memed one. Yeah. Uh, cause it really is just a bunch of cuts of him just like spewing nonsense about the world. <laughs> he's like, mm -hmm. he's like, what have they done to us? <laughs> it, what was the line he said when he closed? It was something, it was very funny. It was like, uh, it's like my life is not at all. Like I hoped it'd be and everything I was afraid it would become. Yeah. I mean, he's like, that thing came through my door. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Shit. All right. So you get doggy door pig and prof the professional wrestler one. I will go with the, the hair growth pill. Yeah, that yeah. one is very good. Just the, the guy in the obscene bald cap just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> You're not talking because my wife didn't wear a green. She had a coat on, but it was too hot. He made his he's like makes his wife put <laughs> the fucking coat back on. Making her drink the water. And he just goes out and like places to do with the fucking RC car. Yeah. Like, who was that? <laughs> he was the guy with the car. <laughs> no explanation. Uh, fuck, that was a good one. Um, after that, I think I'll do the dog ear hair. Yeah, that one. That one got me, too, because I was trying to figure out, like, what's the deal with the hair? What's the deal with the hair? What? Yeah, I mean, the hair was absurd. And what did he show him as an example of the hair he wanted? It was like fucking was... Brian Cranston, right? No, he showed him a dog. No, no, no. So so he gives his barber the magazine. And he's like, I want to look like his roommates are like, yeah, yeah you want the Brian Cranston. He's like, oh, I page. forgot about his fucking roommates in that yeah. sketch. That actually was the best part. They're all like cheering for him, being yeah. so supportive. In one half of the magazine was was Brian Cranston. The other half was a King Chevalier. Yes, King. Dog. Yeah, the Chevalier or whatever yeah. the fuck dog it is. Yeah. <laughs> then all people were making fun of him. It's right into the guy with the dog ears. <laughs> for air. Oh, oh my. fuck. That was a good one. His friends are like, we're going to talk about this moment at your wedding. Yeah. <laughs> all right, you're up. I'll take the uh, I'll take the opening sketch, the debate show phone guy. Yeah, <laughs> that, that that got me because I was like, that is exactly exactly what I do. <laughs> Pull out my phone, just start playing on it. I got plenty of games. My my mom's robbing. My mom's getting robbed. <laughs> and she's texting. You no, know, the guys are. <laughs> he pulls out the fucking charger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck that. And then like the guy coughs. And he's like, don't fucking cough on my show. <laughs> Um, and then I will go, I think this is the last one I really remember from the rest mm. of the, I guess we only have a few left. Yeah. Actually, I remember most of these. Um, I'll do the, uh, I'll do the throw in the fake water, mm. which is the second sketch. Yes. Um, I thought that was very funny. Because you all had those meetings too. If you've ever worked in corporate America, the, uh, like he really just nails like five, like 
corporate that, culture. Yeah. Maybe not corporate culture as much as just like the weird people you meet sometimes, like mm-hmm. that just really throw a wrench in your life. Like, and you think about them forever. You think about those weirdos for the rest of your life and you're like, was that guy all right? Yeah. <laughs> See, I didn't think that one was that funny. He was what? looking at the metal. The, the metal, metal man one. Yo, that's it's dead near the bottom. I'm trying to think if I want that or the volcano sound one. I don't even remember the volcano sound. It was like, it wasn't a good. There's these last three that are on the board. I don't like really any of them, to be honest. What's uh, on the board? All right, the old stage mime, old timey stage mime. Oh, actually, okay, that one I liked. I think I forgot to. Did I accidentally forget to put that online? I think I did. See, I didn't really like that one. That's better than I think some of the other ones left. So right now we have the old timey stage guy, the metal game show. Uh, the volcano sound and the dirty song guy. Dirty Wait, song guy's oh, my last place one. Dirty song guy is what I was thinking of. Not old timey stage mind. We dirty song talk. guy is my last. Did we, yeah, but we haven't talked. Picked the old timey stage guy yet. What was one. the old timey stage mind guy? It was like he was doing the um, like if he. Oh talk, yeah, he, he talk, talk, money. money. He's like, what yeah. are you doing? What are you doing? What's that? What is that? <laughs> no, he's like, it's just frat bros and bachelor parties. Leave me alone. Uh, so you have one more left. All right, I'll take that one then. That was funny. Yeah, that was a good one. Towards the bottom, but like still had a laugh. Had a chuckle at it. I, I'm very curious to see which one of these. Oh, wait. I was you. I was up. All right. Then you you take just throw fake water. No, I'm going to take the banana breath lady. Which the one ba- was the banana breath lady? <laughs> they were doing some sort of meeting about sexual harassment or something. And the lady's like, they asked the lady to give an example. And she's like, I'll tell you. What do you, what, do you just need a banana banana breath? And, <laughs> and then all the shit starts happening outside, right? Or she starts. No, that's the volcano one. Okay. So in this one, like, uh, he's, she's like, everyone laughed at her joke, and she's like, it's now become the best moment of her life. She's like, we should get shirts made up of this oh, meeting. Oh, yes, HR seminar. yes, yes. She asked the guy to draw, like, a computer. She's like, I can't draw a computer, sorry. And then he brings it to her, and it looks like a fucking corn cob. And he's like, I told you I couldn't fucking draw it. Uh, so I'll do Banana Breath Lady, but then after that, I will do the old-timey uh, stage guy. And now okay. we have Metal Game Show, Volcano Sound, and Dirty Song Guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the Volcano Sound. Uh... Not the funniest thing. The the funniest part was when the the boss comes and pulls the girl out. She's like, "Don't ever like acknowledge him doing something like that." Or so just keep doing it over and over. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. And then you got I'll take that. Show or- Anytime they get into like special effects, I'm not usually in on it. Yeah. Um. And then yeah, I'll take the metal game. The metal game show. I didn't. I yeah. I didn't really laugh at all at that. I didn't laugh at th- I didn't laugh at that because that was it was very derivative of, of chunky. Yes, it yes, it was very derivative, chunky. Yeah, and it wasn't nearly as funny. Um, but I do like, for the most part, whenever they have a Sam Richardson hosting a, any I sort do, of thing. I, I did actually kind of think it was funny how much he, he kept reiterating that he built the set. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I could not understand the rules of that show. Uh, and then I'll get the Dirty Song Guy. The Dirty Song Guy, I just didn't really get it. I Like, the original concept of it, I thought was very funny. Yeah, I think there's a funnier thing they could have done there. Like, yeah, the like, new I do friend like, in a big I friend do, group. I do like that setup of like, oh, we used to do this in high school. And then he's doing like, something really remember. fucking weird. But it just wasn't, it was like just not weird enough. Yeah. And I, I think that that line in the beginning where he, him being like the new friend is like, they, they said like an inside joke. And he's like, yeah, I wouldn't know. <laughs> like, just as loud as he can. Uh, okay, so here are our, our teams. Um Gooch has the summer, the dating show, the Tim Meadows wedding, VR shopping, the studio audience, the Shirt Brothers, Patty Harrison hating his bo- her boss, uh, Tim Heidecker heart monitor, propo- the wrestling proposal thing, the doggy door pig, the debate show phone guy throwing the fake water, the volcano sound, and the metal game show guy. I have the egg video game, um, the driving crooner, the friend group pyramid scheme, the Will Forte ponytail, the pay it forward chain, Connor O'Malley ending skit. Um, Jason Schwartzman kid skit, the Fred Armisen scaring kid skit, the hair growth pill, the dog ear hair, banana breath lady, old timey mime, and the dirty song guy. What do you, what do you think is going to be like the most viral one from that? Like, the egg one, I think. It's got to be the egg one. Because that's just so simple. It's either the egg or the zip one. Yeah. Zip line is fucking killing zip me. Zip line. Oh, I wonder what they're actually like, like at the actual houses for like Bachelorette and Bachelor. Cause like I feel like wait what you know like you know like the ho- like when they have, live in the big house for bachelor or bachelorette oh. or whatever I feel like if you remove the girl from that situation it would rock yeah no I bet I bet the dudes get along I bet it's fun for the I guess the bachelorette's the one where it's all the guys right yeah pining after a girl yeah I bet I bet the dudes get along pretty well mm-hmm. there but I I can't imagine the flip is true <laughs> yeah putting 
no offense to the ladies, lady listeners out there, all three of you. Um, yeah, like I, I just can't imagine a house full of girls who don't know each other. I could along. get along with a giant group of dudes like any day. Like, you know what I mean? If you Especially threw, if you're like a house with a fucking pool, like house of the pool. Is I line? bet they do have to yell at the, the guys to get out of the pool yeah. and like stop fucking around. They're all like hanging out, like talking about some like the dumbest shit, like the 10X or whatever. The, yeah. the biggest like himbos talking yeah. about dumb shit. And they're just like have to yell at them to stop, like get out of the pool or hot tub, whatever. Like, it's like we can't put this in the show. Can you guys like do something? <laughs> the uh, I'm showing you my fantasy football team. Shut the fuck up. We uh, no, okay, I can't. That would actually be a great. Just it's like instead of the Bachelorette, it's just like a dudes hanging out show. It's like there's no objective, but they still keep like all the music and the t- and the cues in and all that shit. Like, they should do like the best friend, like just pick out the coolest dude. And it's like a dude yeah. just picking his new best friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like what, Rudy's the dude, and then everybody's just trying to be his friend. What if, it, if that's the end of the show? Like they, it's like they're just hanging out, they're just chilling. And at the end of the show, listeners have to vote on who the the coolest dude is, or the best dude is. Not even the coolest, just like who was the best dude. It's like who's who's the dude? Yeah, who's the most popular dude? Like who's not even most? Just like who was the best dude to you? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like not the ringleader or whoever ends up being the guy making plans or whatever. Oh, and they do that. They do all like the group date things and all that shit too. Oh my gosh. I'd watch that. I would watch that. <laughs> there Especially we go. We got to pitch that to Hank. Yeah. That, that'll be the next thing. After, uh, what was Brianna's one? Um, uh, Project Verified. Like that'll be the next one. Yeah. <laughs> Project Dudes. Project, Project Himbo. I think would work for that. Uh, anyway, that's episode 109. We'll be back on Tuesday. Uh, what are we reviewing on Tuesday? Spider Verse. Duh. Yeah, Spider Verse. I was trying to think. I've been to like three screeners in the last three days, which, like, woe is me. Humble brag. Woe is me. Man, you had to go watch movies. Yeah. You know what? The last one was in NAMC, so it was much better, regardless of if the movie was better or worse. You know what really fucking sucks? That, that nameless other theater chain. Listen, I might be switching here soon. Just because we're shaming you into it. Although I will say their popcorn was better. I think their popcorn's better. Jeff is AMC's. absolutely wrong about the popcorn. But I think it's better than AMC's. I won't lie that the, the Pepsi thing really fucking hurts. Yeah. I, I'm such a slut for Diet Coke. Mm-hmm. Di- have, you know I mean, like, give me a Diet Pepsi. Just it hurts, dude. It's bad. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back on uh, Tuesday. Make sure to watch Into the Spider first. See you then.